guys? Good, good. Did you guys chicken for a wash and club before this by any chance? No. No? No. Mm -hmm. um, do you have previously bought tickets or? No. Okay. Um, it's $7 per person. We do prefer cash. However, if you only have a card, you can't take that too. Yeah, I asked for a little bit. Um, this is to wear a mask. However, if you guys don't want to wear it, I'm not going to force you to. No, we don't wear a mask. Is that a real skull? Uh, I mean, I don't. Um, the school's real. Yeah, it's a family heirloom. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so it's my family's. If, um, so in the United States, it's legal to own human remains. Thank you. Um, however, if they are Native American, then it's illegal, it's not. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you, did I hear it right? You said it's your family heirloom? Yeah. Oh, so you're, you're the descendant of the owner? No. Oh. Um, my family are the caretakers here. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so we live in the service quarters beneath the house. Oh. Mm. Lots of fun, we get all the ghosty experiences. Oh, ain't you lucky? I want that kind of job. <laughs> are you guys interested in the haunted side of things or are you more yes. interested in history? In fact, uh -huh. history? Yeah, in fact, because yeah. um, uh, I believe he's one of the biggest benefactor of UNR, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, he uh, has a building there. Um, How's it going? Yes. It's also like a huge tradition for people. By George Hurst, mm -hmm. right here. We are the oldest building here in Virginia City. Mm -hmm. um, a majority of the town did burn down in the 1800s, but we were untouched. We were one of the very few buildings to be untouched. Actually. Why is that? Do you know why? I do. Um, so Mr. Mackey saw that the fires were devastating most of the area, so he told the local people, "If you let me dynamite the church." then the explosion will be so great it'll put out the fire. Mm. So when he did, they did do that. They dynamited the whole church and when that explosion happened, it sucked all the oxygen out of the flames and it put the fire out like that. Mm -hmm. He then refunded the church and had it rebuilt um, and then his wife is responsible for the stained glass windows on the side of it. So if you go in there, you'll actually see the handiwork of Mr. Mackey and Mrs. Mackey themselves. Mm. Pretty cool, right? Yep. All right. What a very good, oh, a clever idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was really smart. He was uh, definitely uh, out of his time range for, in a lot of senses. Mm -hmm. um, from adopting children to his views on mm -hmm. race, mm -hmm. uh, he was just very outside of his time. Yeah. Um, Mr. Hurst heard about the Comstock load. So Mr. Comstock was the man he was monopolizing the majority of the mines. We won Nevada from Mexico in the Mexican-American War in 1843, mm -hmm. and the Silver Rush happened in about 1848. Um, so Hearst wanted a cut of the silver, so he moved down here from his Bay Area home mm -hmm. and bought this plot of land, bought the mine right across the street, built this place, and this was his mining office. He got about $15 million from the mine across the street in silver. Mm -hmm. um, when he was done, however, in about the late 1860s, mm -hmm. the silver kind of started to diminish, and he thought it would have been more of a loss to keep digging and paying people versus continuing. Um, so he decided to sell in 1870, which is where John Mackey comes from. John Mackey was an Irish immigrant in the 1800s, which was pretty unique for the time frame. He must have had some money in Ireland because the Ireland Irish were actually transported over with the Chinese and the African Americans to be used as slaves mm -hmm. in the United States. Mm -hmm. So how he got to America under a working class and a free man was quite astounding for the time. Mm -hmm. um, he was in Downeyville, California 
for the gold rush and ended up being a few years late. Mm -hmm. um, so he went bankrupt down in California. When he mm -hmm. heard of the silver rush, mm -hmm. he came up here and that's where he bought the home from Mr. Hurst. Mm -hmm. So in 1871 was when he purchased the home. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Hirsch thought he was pulling one over on Mrs. Mackey by selling him a dead, 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 <laughs> dead mine. Um, so he moved to back to the Bay Area thinking, ha, huh, I just made a bunch more money mm -hmm. and this guy got duped out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to not get any fortune. Mm -hmm. Irish boys, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but he must have been rolling in his grave later on um, when Mr. Mackey hit the largest silver strike in the United States. Nice, nice. If not the entire world, mm. he got about a hundred million dollars worth of silver Ooh. out of the exact same mine. Mm. That's six hundred billion to this day. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, he's the richest man in the world overnight was how that mm. happened in 1873. Mm. Of was pretty upset. He built his first castle by that point. Mm. He was upset, to say the least, mm -hmm. um, but Mr. Mackey wasn't, hence why now it's referred to as the Mackey Mansion, not mm -hmm. the first mansion. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of four Bonanza Kings, or Silver Kings, mm -hmm. so if you ever watch the show Bonanza, that's where those terms came from. Mm -hmm. We had James Flood, James Fair, mm -hmm. William O'Brien, and then of course John Mackey. Mm -hmm. If you turn around, you'll actually see an original display case. This was built in this very room, propped up and mounted to the wall by John Mackey himself. Mm. If you look on the right hand side on that little, you'll see some rock samples right above the bottles. Mm. Those are actual samples that Mackey would have shown his investors oh. what they were investing in when they came here. Oh, the, the silver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like standard quartz crystal, but the gray mm -hmm. in there is silver veins. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah, I can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was actually mm -hmm. a very hard task to get from rock down to a silver bar. Mm -hmm. um, they wouldn't pay themselves in rocks, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so they had to actually grind these down by hand. Mm -hmm. They used different kinds of mechanics to mm -hmm. get it down to yeah. as close to the powder as possible. Mm -hmm. To extract the silver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they would actually pour that um, those stones with the silver in them mm -hmm. and this when they were came that powdery pebble substance oh, yeah. and they would mix cyanide, mm -hmm. arsenic, and mercury into the smelting pot along mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And silver mm -hmm. is naturally pretty gunky so it floated to the top and became a liquid and the rock and dirt sunk to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then it was poured into the molds that made the silver bars. Mm -hmm. It is still in there. Yeah, I can see it. Constitutionally. Yes. You can see it around the sides. Mm -hmm. Isn't it pretty? Silver? Yeah. Yes, that's silver. Silver. Look at the sides. You see it. Yep. Right the but because there is silver in there, that also means that the mercury, arsenic, and cyanide is ah. in there as well. <laughs> so, oh, the poison is there. Yes. So, the how do they pour it on? Um, they would have to boil it a little bit, so they would make this super hot, yes. yes. Uh -huh. And then when they were done, they would actually pull it over and they would pour it through here into a mold. So they had to knock it over. They did it manually? Oh, they did. Of course. Well, how would they do it back then, 1800s? Yeah, they didn't have machines. But did you that. see the way it was? Did you see as with all If you look here, you can actually see there's a lot of the architecture was all wooden based. We yeah. had a little metal. But for the mm -hmm. most part, even the roller wheels were wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty so, cool. Mr. Hurst, is he part or uh, uh, any any relation to the uh, millionaires, billionaires Hurst family? Yes. Same. Yes. They are. Um, this is where that family got their wealth. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that other wealth actually stemmed from his great granddaughter, Hattie Hurst. Mm -hmm. She was an infamous bank robber in the 1900s. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> William Randolph first, his son built the first castle. Oh, yes, the first castle. Okay. Yeah. So he was pretty wealthy. I see you found my cash register. Yes, that is an 1800s piece. I get to use that to that day. Awesome. Also, a little Remington typewriter right there in the corner. Yes. Very nice. No Remington. <laughs> and what is this uh, shoe? The shoe? the shoe? Oh, this was a full size women's shoe in Whoa. the 1800s. Yes. What was so tiny? Right? What? Um, so this will actually be a really fun fact for you because yeah. the ladies in the 1800s copied this trend off of the Chinese women. That <laughs>
Yeah. The Chinese women would bind their feet so they were forced to from birth. Our women thought they were a really cool fashion trend. <laughs> and so they started binding their feet as well. That's yeah. pure torture. Right? Yeah. This wasn't the only torture method that women did for corset. fashion. They, yeah, the corset. <laughs> they would crush down yeah. their ribs even mm -hmm. to try and get it as close to their spinal cord as possible. Ooh. Really tiny. And women were already pretty naturally tiny. They mm -hmm. were about four foot nine in stature, so that was about mm -hmm. max height for them. Mm -hmm. Men would only be about five foot four, five yeah. foot six. If you were taller than that, you were a giant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was Mr. Mackey. Mr. Mackey was six foot one. Oh. <laughs> Um, it's a family heirloom, um, so we're not actually sure who he was. All we do is we call him Chuck. We display him in there for everyone to look hey, at Chuck. and admire. Yeah, he's pretty cool. <laughs> he's lost his head, but he's always smiling. Aww. This is an 1800s detonator. So they would hook up the wire right here, mm -hmm. and they'd slam it down after they walked away. So it would cause a chain reaction that would light a spark and travel down the wire to the dynamite, where then, of oh. course, boom. You know who made that popular? Huh? You know how, who made it that popular? I don't know who made this, actually. No, the, 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 the person that made it popular? No. Who did? Peter Sellers. Really? Cool. That's interesting. Peter Sellers, when he was a, uh, he was a cast in a movie, and he saw oh. shoes. Oh, the, yeah. oh. the bonanza strike. Mm -hmm. Here's Mr. Mackey looking mm. handsome in his younger days. Mm. Yeah. Her name is Mrs. Galette, not to be mistaken for the razor. Her family didn't create it. <laughs> um, I really don't know why she's in this photo, mm -hmm. other than she was just traveling with the fairs. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fair right here, mm -hmm. he was um, one of Mackey's business partners. He was one of the four Bonanza Kings. He was also the most scoundrel out of the four. He had many, many affairs mm -hmm. on his wife with married, single, prostitutes. He really didn't care. Ooh. I mean, so long you had a rack, he liked you. <laughs> was his thing. Oh, no. Yeah, it really ticked off his wife who's standing right here and uh, hence why the governor's standing in between them to save the argument of the day. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Nevada was also the very first state and territory to legalize divorce. Las Vegas was known as Sin City for this very reason. Mm -hmm. okay. So when that was legalized, she was one of the very few first lasses, despite taboos, to file for divorce on her husband. Mm. Yeah, I can see her, her expression. She's just waiting for that divorce papers. <laughs> right? Oh, I think she was probably debating killing him too. <laughs> She's cyanide in his coffee. <laughs> This guy right here might surprise you. He was a Civil War general Ooh. and your 18th and 19th president, if I'm remembering correctly. That's him? Yeah, you know who that is? 19th president? No, not, not really. Not it's Ulysses S. Grant. Ulysses. No way! Yes. Wait. Ulysses Grant. Mm -hmm. He looks so different. Right? He's a little younger. He just got done fighting the Civil War, so I think yeah, some stress. He got real out. fat eventually. <laughs> he did get fat. And he, didn't he die from the tank, tongue cancer? I think he did, yeah. yeah. That was later on in his day. Um, Mr. Grant was actually here a lot in his time. Mm -hmm. um, he came here for several visits. He was elected twice. Um, Mrs. Mackey made him gifts um, mm -hmm. for his re-election even. Mm -hmm. He came here and gambled with Mr. Mackey at the Washoe Club. Mm -hmm. He came here and he did a speech for when Abraham Lincoln was elected president. So if you walk down the street down there, you'll mm -hmm. see a yellow mansion. It's called the Savage. Mm -hmm. And he did a speech off the balcony for in honor of Abraham Lincoln when mm -hmm. he was elected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if that surprises you, this will surprise you even more. This is Mrs. Grant and their, his son right here, Leland. What? <laughs> I didn't know that was a woman. Yeah, it, it kind of covered the dress on purpose so oh. nobody notices. She mm. looks a little grubby. She's definitely topping her husband, but I can assure you she actually was a pretty beautiful lady. Oh, mm. yeah, she's the eye catcher. Yeah, yeah, she is. And then you have Leland again, and then Mr. Grant right there. The reasons why they never looked at the camera was because they were cross-eyed. <laughs> yeah. So most people didn't know that. So she figured if she looked off into the distance, and she told her son oh. this too, that it wouldn't catch that. So was it pretty bad, her cross-eyed? Oh, it? yeah. Oh, if you look God. right here, you'll actually notice that she didn't turn away quite enough, and you'll see her cross-eyes. Oh, you know, you're right. Oh, oh poor woman. 
Yeah. Um, she was pretty, she was a good looking woman mm -hmm. though, so I don't think that put a mm -hmm. diaper too much. Yeah. <laughs> Probably didn't care. He got the best of the batch, right? Yep. He's the president. Kind of has to. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. This guy right here is also super surprising. He was Japanese, not Chinese. Hmm. He was a general. Um, for the time frame, he was also a free man. So Ooh. here in the Wild West, they mainly used Chinese servitude. So that's why you see um, on certain doors come to town, Chinese entrance and exit only. Okay. That was because people up here were mainly pretty racist towards the Chinese and mm. Asian type people. Mm. Um, so he came here as a free man looking mm. for work mm. and nobody would hire him because mm. of his ethnicity. Mm. However, when he stumbled upon Mr. Mackey, mm. Mr. Mackey hired him on the spot. Mm. He was made his right hand man, personal assistant, and was even his best friend. Oh. Mm. Pretty rough, right? Yep. And he that's, that's why good. he's in this photo too. Mm. Uses ramp knows how to pose. Look at his post like a boss. <laughs> mm. But he was made to sit down, not in the same uh, angle as no. the rest. Uh, he wasn't made to sit down. I think he was kneeling down because he may have been taller than her. Mm. Also, you had to cram in to get into the photo, so he <laughs> yeah. couldn't stand on mm. either side. It would have cut him out. Yeah. We, would, we would ask him, what is the real truth behind that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are you not there at the same level? <laughs> he actually got lots and lots of praises from Mr. Grant, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He had many conversations with the president, mm -hmm. and he was very blessed to even be in Photo. Most yeah. servants yeah. or co-workers didn't make it into photos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason why Grant's here on this special occasion mm -hmm. is actually because of Mr. Mackey. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know, but the Silver Maid in Virginia City funded the Civil War and why the Civil War ended up how it was. Yeah. It also helped to fund San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So Fair, the Fairmont Hotel, his daughters built that from mm -hmm. the money he made here. It also helped fund a lot of the other buildings in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, so Mr. Mackey and um, Mr. Grant were both really heavy on the Republic end of the Civil War, mm -hmm. meaning that they did not want the slave trade to continue. Mm -hmm. um, in this time frame, you literally only had one Democrat. One Democrat gave up their seat and moved to the Republic end in order to stop the civil, in order to stop the slave trade, and that's what sparked the Civil War. Yeah. Um, so he was so grateful for those that donations that he had to come up here and see what, what that was all about. He yeah. wanted to see the mines, who worked there, who died, who was running it, mm -hmm. just see what it's all about. When he came up, the paparazzi swarmed him and he uh, said, Mr. Grant, can you give us a quote? Mm -hmm. And he said, that's the closest to hell I've ever been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he just got done fighting the Civil War. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What he's referring to is that here in Nevada, we're geothermal. Mm -hmm. um, so the further you go, the hotter it gets. We <laughs> have natural springs beneath mm -hmm. us. I believe the waters could have reached temperatures over 175 degrees mm -hmm. at time frames. Ooh. Yeah, our men could only work for about 10 minutes at a time until they were transported into cooling chambers for about 30 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And when they were cooling down, they were going to extremes. They were pouring water over themselves, they were butt naked, they mm -hmm. were um, on blocks of ice. They were doing every measure possible to try and cool themselves down mm -hmm. until they had to work for another 10 minutes, mm -hmm. a grueling 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, also, there was lots of natural gases, and with gas lighting being a thing, lots of natural and um, accidental explosions occurred. Mm -hmm. Also, architecture was not very good. If you look at that picture right there, that's actually a model of how the mines are built up. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. so one thing goes wrong in the whole town of Virginia yeah. City from the sink. Man. Yeah, that's how bad it was. So lots of people lost their lives falling down the mines, and we are the second um, deepest mines in the United States. Mm -hmm. Your deepest mine is 2,900 feet, and that's in California from the gold rush. Mm -hmm. We are 2,700 feet. Ooh. Yeah. Your second deepest mine in the United States is actually in our backyard. Whoa! By the gazebo. Uh, is this, yeah. Can you still explore it? Uh, no, it's capped off. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, this guy was also here. He's non-historical, but he still <laughs> gave us a visit. You know who that is? Keanu Reeves. Johnny Depp. You're right. Oh, yeah, wow. Well. Uh -huh. Yeah. He made a film up here. Yeah, he did. He did do a film here. It was called Dead Men. 
Okay. He started out his career doing westerns. Okay. So when they were filming Dead Men, he went around town. You know, he always has to be extra. That's his specialty. <laughs> uh, so he stumbled upon the building and said he wanted to stay here. Mm -hmm. And our owner allowed him to stay here, but under a certain price range. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, mm -hmm. the building's not free. Mm -hmm. It's not a bed and breakfast, and you have to be trusted to stay in a historical building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, however, on the third night of Mr. Depp staying here, he cut his visit a little short. Why? He, he was a wolf. Huh? <laughs> he saw a ghost? Yes, actually. <laughs> he was awoken to a little girl jumping on his bed in the middle of the night, thinking this was probably a cool joke being put on <laughs> him by the owner. Woo. So he scavenged the house and searched for her. <laughs> couldn't find her, realized, oh yeah, the house is haunted, and Ugh. packed up his things and left. <laughs> yeah. I would have talked to the ghost. Yeah, uh, I don't think he had that much of a ball. Aww. Yeah. Poor death, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so these right here, uh, what mining office would it be without a vault, right? Ooh. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's a vault. Huh? Yes. That is very trippy. Right? Um, so Mr. Hurst actually had the brilliant idea of building a wooden door over the giant metal frame. A lot of people looked for that metal door yeah. as a giveaway for the vault. Mm -hmm. So he figured if he hit it behind a normal door, mm -hmm. nobody would guess. And of yeah. course no one did for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You guys can go in here. That door is the original door. Yeah. And that bell is the original firehouse bell. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So that bell existed when the town was active. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know what? That makes sense because um, Winchester has the same style of bowl. It's a wood and the metal after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, however, can you imagine sitting in there with just a candle and a shotgun? Nope. <laughs> um, that's what our armed guard would do all day and all night. He would sit in there all by himself with just a candle mm. and a shotgun. Mm. However, his life did get a little hint of excitement mm. because two men discovered where the location of the vault was mm. in the late 1800s. Broke in through mm. that door, made their way over to the vault, mm. opened it up, were not aware he was in there, and were shot point blank in the chest and they died right where you're standing. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Are you guys still here? <laughs> yeah. So when Zach was here, mm -hmm. um, when he first came into the building, he wasn't given a tour. He came over to the door and he said, Don, why am I getting chest pains? Mm -hmm. um, so Zach calls himself a psychic medium, which just mm -hmm. means he's a sensitive, he feels things. Mm -hmm. So we think he was either feeling the residual energy of the gunshots. Mm -hmm. My other guess is potentially he was feeling Mr. Mackey's heart attack. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mackey died of a heart attack. Heart attack. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you guys are done looking in there, we'll make our way to mm -hmm. the next room. Okay. I will squeeze in between you guys. Mm -hmm. Once you guys take a look, please. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So this is the vault. It's the size of a storage. Not a lot of room. It's... Ah, okay. I saw him sit on the porch just a minute ago and then... Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's, they better pay that guard double the pay for him staying here the entire day. I think they did pay him pretty well. That or he just pocketed some of the silver on the time there. I mean, <laughs> notice a yeah. little piece from a hundred million. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people couldn't count. Yeah. I doubt Mr. Matthew took the time to go count other pieces. He would do all his wealth. I doubt he's checking all the coins. Right? Can you just give the key here outside? Is this a Native American lady? No. So these are actually children just playing cowboys and Indians. Oh, okay. In yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. There's actually an interesting story um, regarding the Paiutes here, though. Okay. Um, so if you guys watch the show Bonanza, then you'll notice in one of the episodes there were two Paiute men that kidnapped a girl mm -hmm. from the town. Um, 
Reality was is that it was two white men from the town that kidnapped a 13 and 14 year old girl Whoa. and they um, raped them and held them hostage for a um, ghost. <laughs> <laughs> um, they held them hostage for a ransom. Mm -hmm. When people found the girls, um, the men scared for their lives and blamed it on the pipes. Oh, okay. The pipes were so pissed okay. off at this notion um, that they launched an attack. So the war that happened in Gold City was the war over that. Oh man, that's messed okay. up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright guys, close oh. the door. Yeah. Don't want to slam on you. Go ahead and head into the next room. There's no more money in there. No more money. It got breezy. Is there a window open? Uh, there is. There's okay. a door downstairs and a door upstairs. That are For a moment, it was, I thought it was a ghost thingy. <laughs> what is air conditioning here? Um, there is no air conditioning here. Oh, so this is natural? Yes. Wow. So we have doors open upstairs and I downstairs. See. And there used to be windows that would allow, if you uh -huh. opened them, for a yeah. draft. Yeah. And it would keep the house cool in, yeah. the, in the summer, keep it hot in the winter. It's like yeah. that now. I mean, right, you, you can, you can feel, that feel that it's draft. draft. That's why mm -hmm. I said, is there a conditioner here? This is natural. This no? is natural. Wow. Look, yeah. this, these are all the original pieces, right? And um, they're not all original no? to the house, but no. they are original 1800s pieces. Can you imagine this, how tiny the people are before? Yeah. So the, my goodness, right? Like, like dwarves. Women rarely reach over forty. Nobody, no. nobody sleeps here, though. Um, we have uh, caretakers live in the servants' quarters beneath the house. So on that mm -hmm. third, on the bottom story, mm -hmm. we have kitchens, and that's where they stay. Mm -hmm. Kind of take care of the whole house. Yeah, they take care of the grounds and the house, make sure it stays clean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this house was very peculiar for the 1800s and is even still peculiar to this day yeah. because most houses only had one purpose. This was a tri-purpose home. Mm -hmm. It was a workspace, a living space, and then the third use was actually held in this very room. This is called a parlor. It was the living room, but it was also used for funerals in the 1800s. Oh, funeral. Um, yeah. So the, <laughs> uh, because the death rates were so high across mm -hmm. the street, if the family couldn't afford to host a funeral, Mr. Mackey would open up his living room and he would let them post the funeral here for free. Oh, and then nice. when they were done, he'd give them a huge clump of silver, you know, to get them back to the whatever happens wow. next, or find another job or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good way of keeping friends. Yeah, he was a pretty good man. Um, he was outside his time. Just he was all around pretty good guy. I mean, he came over to the United States. He would have been a slave, but mm -hmm. he made it into the working class somehow. Um, this is an original piece. Wow. This is a hand-carved English mm -hmm. tiger's oak from London, England. Mm -hmm. um, the man who did this also did a similar piece in the White House. Mm -hmm. He did many other cathedral ceilings mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, this piece is also original to the house. It's a one of a kind, mm -hmm. but it is a set of one of five. Mm -hmm. So ours is the only one with the gold leaf frame artwork. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason why it hasn't aged a single day since mm -hmm. the 1800s, while normal mirrors, they were backed mm -hmm. with silver and mercury. They would be yellowed, tarnished, scratched, mm -hmm. chipping away. Mm -hmm. This one will never age, and that is because of what is backing it. It is called diamond dust. Mm. Oh, same as a washer club. Yes. Same as what? Uh, they have the same style. The diamond dust and the mirror? Yes, yeah, oh. so, they yeah. own the other four. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's Maybe pretty you look pretty you're here. <laughs> <laughs> because there's diamond. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to look like the vampire in Twilight. Who's this lady? Um, this is Mrs. Mackey. Ooh, she, she got a fierce gaze. Yes. At least six feet tall back then, otherwise that mirror's not going to work for you. <laughs> Mackey was uh, six foot one. He was a giant for the time. Mm -hmm. um, most men only got to about five foot four, five foot mm -hmm. six if they were lucky. Mm -hmm. well, women were rarely over four foot nine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tiny people. You can see by the dresses that the women were yeah. yeah. small. It is Mr. Mackey. Yes, this is Mr. Mackey in his older days, mm -hmm. and this is Mrs. Mackey. Right here. Um, she looks very stern in this photo, but I guarantee you it's just a status symbol. Um, in the 
1800s, if you were to smile or laugh in a photo, mm -hmm. you would be considered a fool or a laughing stock. Mm -hmm. And it's because the condition of your teeth would be a dead giveaway of your wealth. Mm -hmm. um, so her previous husband was a dentist, so mm -hmm. I'm sure she had some nice chompers. She got married twice to very wealthy men. Mm -hmm. um, but if you were poor, you probably didn't have very many teeth left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. just yeah. keeping it concealed. Mm -hmm. Um, children. Any children? For she did. She had four children, actually. With Mr. Matthews. Uh, she had two with Mr. Matthews. Mm. So she had two daughters with her previous husband. Mm -hmm. He was a dentist in the Bay Area. His mm -hmm. name was Brian Hungerford. Mm -hmm. um, Brian was a bit of a scoundrel. I don't think he mm -hmm. was a very good man. He mm -hmm. was an alcoholic, a drug mm -hmm. addict, um, mm -hmm. a domestic abuser, and then later on in his life, a murderer. Mm -hmm. He is actually called, I call him a murderer because he is the reason why her oldest daughter died. Oh. Um, she had polio, so she was handicapped, so mm -hmm. she was very, very vulnerable mm -hmm. to say the least, mm -hmm. and she got a majority of the beatings. Mm -hmm. Not to say that her mom and her little sister didn't get that mm -hmm. as well, um, but she, because of her vulnerable state, mm -hmm. got quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. Um, her father one day decided he was going to push her down the stairs with intent to kill, and she broke her neck at the bottom of the stairwell. That's so messed up. Yeah, that's so messed, pretty up. messed up. Uh, he did get his karma. He um, overdosed on opium. Karma's <laughs> bitch. Uh, so um, she got remarried to Mr. Mackey, and Mr. Mackey adopted her youngest daughter, Ava, which was also pretty rare for the time. Most children, if you were not the child of the current father, you were seen as the bastard child. Mm -hmm. You were then used as an indentured servant, so mm -hmm. you'd either be used in that family or in another family, that or you were sold into the sex trade. So you would have been um, owned by the madam and the, by the mm -hmm. prostitutes to be groomed to be a prostitute mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so she got pretty fortunate. She was very mm -hmm. dearly loved by mm -hmm. Mr. Mackey. However, when they moved here, uh, tuberculosis was circling mm -hmm. around the area. Mm -hmm. So Ava and a little girl, Emma, the girl who was jumping on mm -hmm. Johnny Depp's bed, mm -hmm. passed away of tuberculosis mm -hmm. upstairs in those very rooms. Mm -hmm pretty sad. Um, right after, they had two sons, mm -hmm. William and Clarence. Mm -hmm. William uh, was very fond of horse racing, mm -hmm. so he was doing the jumps on the derby when he was about 20 years old and mm -hmm. suffered a very tragic accident. He fell off mm -hmm. the back of his horse, broke his neck on the jump, and Ooh. then was trampled by the rest of the horses. That's, mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> yeah, pretty gruesome. Uh, he had it the worst. Oh man, that's no fun. Clarence was the only remaining son to have survived, and this is a picture of him on his wedding day to mm. Catherine. Mm -hmm. um, their wedding gift was quite extravagant. Has anybody heard of Harbor Hill? No. Harbor Hill, Long Island, New York. It's a pretty mm -hmm. giant um, estate. It's mm -hmm. still there to this day. I believe it's a museum that you can go and have tours at. Mm -hmm. um, he was also the world's largest collector of medieval armor that's displayed in the Long Island Museum as well. Mm -hmm. So their wedding gift was 200 acres, mm -hmm. Harbor Hill. Um, so when Mr. Mackey passed away, mm -hmm. Mrs. Mackey decided to move to Paris, France leaving the home in Clarence's hand. Mm -hmm. Clarence, wanting to move into the estate in Long Island, decided to sell the home fully furnished, mm -hmm. um, left to Long Island, and then when she passed away, he inherited, inherited over $30 million. Mm -hmm. Not to say he wasn't a millionaire already on his own. Mm -hmm. um, he decided to invest in the stock market of the 1920s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Great Depression hit. He went from 30 million net dollar net worth down to two million dollar net worth. Mm. If the Great Depression lasted a single year longer, he would have been completely ruined. Mm. Right? Mm. Um, however, that wasn't the straw that broke his broke the camel's back, mm. surprisingly. Um, that actually fell into the hands of his children. Mm. So if you look in that photo, those are the three children of Clarence Mackey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the left-hand side, you'll see Catherine, named mm -hmm. after Mom, mm -hmm. John in the middle, named mm -hmm. after Grandpa, and then you'd think the little punk on the right would be named after Grandma for the exact same expression, <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. but her name was actually Ellen, mm -hmm. and Ellen broke her father's heart. Aww. This was 
World War II time period. Mm -hmm. So anybody who came over from the Germany area or anybody who was escaping the Nazi regime came over to America before they closed their borders. Mm -hmm. So Germans, Austrians, Jews, all alike, were all seen as enemies to the country. Mm -hmm. Spies were a really huge deal back at that time, hence why Russia and Nazi Germany had about the same firepower as the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. um, she decided to elope with the world famous Jewish composer Irving Berlin and mm -hmm. that set her father over the edge. Mm -hmm. he, she was disowned and disinherited. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think she minded too much because mm -hmm. she was part of the America's greatest love story. Mm -hmm. Um, her and Irving were married a very happy 63 years. They were never rumored to have a single fight. Mm -hmm. They had children, you know, I'm mm -hmm. sure they had their ins and outs mm -hmm. in, behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. um, they composed many successful songs over the years, like mm -hmm. White Christmas, mm -hmm. No Business Like Show Business, God Bless mm -hmm. America, mm -hmm. songs like that. Mm -hmm. She helped to compose with him. Mm -hmm. She was also a very successful singer. Um, she was also one of the very first few women to ever be accepted into an all-boys college in the 1900s. Nice. So she got a full college experience and became a author later on in the 1900s. She wrote a book about her grandmother. I believe she also wrote a couple others. Um, so in 1988 was the final year of Ellen. Um, she passed away of what I believe was cancer. Oof. And the following year of 1989, Irving Berlin died of a broken heart at the age 101 years old and mm. in perfect health. Mm. Yes. Did you mm. know that when you're in extreme pain, like if you suffer extreme emotional pain, yeah. your heartstrings actually rip? That was what killed him. They said that killed John Muir also, heartbroken. <laughs> of the Hetchy Hetchy Bam? Huh? The Hetchy Hetchy Bam? He was um, petitioning not to the King's Canyon to be turned to a dam. Maybe. I haven't heard too much on that. That book could very well have been the case. Um, this is Ellen's dress right here. This Whoa. would have been 1900s apparel versus um, the 1800s where you would have seen that sharp waistline. <laughs> um, however, this was the 1900s and we had Jefferson meeting Marilyn Monroe was alive and reset the fashion standard. Mm -hmm. So many women went after that uh, very mm -hmm. timeless, mm -hmm. flowy look that Marilyn had. It was considered very mm -hmm. sexy. Mm -hmm. um, these pieces right in front of you, these sofas and the mm -hmm. chair right there, were actually hand designed and hand sewn pieces from mm -hmm. Mrs. Mackey herself. Whoa. She was a very talented seamstress before mm -hmm. she married Mr. Mackey, and she made these in honor of Mr. Grant's reelection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To think that it's still alive in this era, huh? Right. I had a, um, a couple people tell me that we should tell Trump about them and have him move them to the White House. <laughs> and I was like, no, I think the White House has enough artifacts. Hey, come here and then do a speech here. I would love it if he did. I mean, I'm all for it. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a total yeah. Trumper. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. This lady mm -hmm. um, is also yeah, another very that. important <laughs> one. Yes. This so is very stern look. Right? <laughs> she kind of looks a little spooky. The reason yeah. being is that she's dead. Oh. Yeah. Um, so this is called post-mortem photography. It was oh. very common in the oh, early 1900s goodness. because photography was new. Oh. So if they didn't have a photo of you before you died, oh. it happened to children more often, they uh -huh. would pose you in your afterlife. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. You just take it oh, in the oh, poor lady. Yeah, so her eyes are sewn open and right. her mouth is sewn shut and then she was posed in a chair. Oh. Normally you see um, <laughs> photos like this amongst oh. family members. Yeah. Um, but but it's also a pretty weird photo mm -hmm. because it's post-mortem yeah. of a maid, pretty rare, uh -huh. on a tin type, which is a very uh -huh. expensive alternative to paper mm -hmm. in the early days, mm -hmm. in a gold leaf frame. Weird, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, don't, you don't tell them not to smile when they take a picture. <laughs> they're already dead. They're already dead. They're already dead. I said, say cheese. No. What's wrong with you? Um, you know, <laughs> bodies actually do move after they die. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, they go through, mm -hmm. yeah, they go through rigor mortis. Mm -hmm. Their liquids all mm -hmm. start to seep through, yeah. airs start to release. Mm -hmm. So I always think it's a laughing matter for this photo. <laughs> I'm like, imagine propping her up and posing her <laughs> only to hear her fart for the next Oh, no. After trying to take the picture. <laughs> That's possible, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's released. Yeah, <laughs> 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 or 
Hey, baby. Right? Rest in peace. Um, so this picture was actually found in the attic a few short weeks later. Okay. Um, so we had a private tour that was coming on through here. A woman was taking photos like most tourists do, you know, mm -hmm. that's a thing. There used to be an old shaving mirror that was in that corner that was reflecting off onto that door. Mm -hmm. She took three photos and in only one of them she caught this. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. see her bonnet? Yeah. Mm, wow. There's Harriet in oh, her ghost form. Yes. Ooh, wow. um, we were actually in the attic and my, oh my mom goodness. tripped over the photo. Ooh. Is that your throw? Yeah. Oh, this is so spooky. Yeah. Hi, Miss Harriet. Um, if it makes you feel any better, uh, a few okay. weeks ago uh -huh. we were doing a night investigation. Uh -huh. So we do ghost uh -huh. tours for two hours at uh -huh. night. I think um, I just saw that move. <laughs> we have people out there. <laughs> We have people waiting out there. Yes. And so I was doing a night tour and we were down in um, the dining room table with a group. I think I had about four or five people. Um, and we had a little light vortex that went off. The light was in the direction towards the hallway. So I thought it would be a little funny to take a few pictures. I was like, eh, you know, I'm not going to catch anything, but yeah. worth a try. Maybe yeah. catch something uh -huh. cool. I thought I blurred out one of the photos. So I went to go delete it and I actually stumbled upon this. Yeah, there's it's a the shadow. Exact same maid. You'll yeah. see her bonnet shadow. and her uh -huh. dress. Right yeah. Uh -huh. It's in the dining room. The dining room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is she a maid or is she related to the owner? She's a maid. She's okay. She's a maid. Uh -huh. yes. That one there. Well, well, she... She probably belonged to the Fair family. Yeah. Oh. To be honest. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. She, she, yeah. Um, she loves it here. Okay? Yeah. Yes. yes. They have does. a kid. Mm -hmm. The kid keeps jumping mm -hmm. up and down, so she loves it here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they feel at home here. Yeah. You know? I've actually seen John Mackey as well. Ooh. Um, so I was bringing mm -hmm. in groceries down there. I was on the brick path, and I was mm -hmm. turned around. I was joking mm -hmm. with my brother, and I turn around, mm -hmm. and there's a man taller than life. I Ooh. swear to God. Man. I could make out his suit in perfect mm -hmm. detail. Mm -hmm. He had a mm -hmm. like a gray type vest. I could see Ooh. the pocket watch go across, mm -hmm. black pants, mm -hmm. black mm -hmm. shoes. I just couldn't make out his face. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing there looking at this probably mm -hmm. six foot two guy, mm -hmm. and he takes a look at me because his body's turned. Yeah. He takes one step, and halfway through the second, he vanishes right in front of my face. Oh my Maybe he just said, Good job. Out. Continue. Maybe. Uh -huh. Maybe. Maybe he just wants to say hello. Okay? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> because because uh, you're giving the tour, so. <laughs> Mr. Mackey also spoke in a stutter, so if you come in here and you don't have a stutter and you get a stutter, I'm blaming him entirely. <laughs> oh, don't give me a stutter. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so the rest of the tour you guys actually get to do on your own. Mm -hmm. However, I will give you a few tips and tricks before uh -huh. we go up. When you go upstairs, the first mm -hmm. two rooms on your left, you will mm -hmm. see our Mr. and Mrs. Mackey's room. You mm -hmm. will be able to tell the difference. Um, John. So John Mackey's room was the room that Johnny Depp stayed in, mm. um, where he was awoken by the little girl. That will mm. be your first room on the left. Mm -hmm. They okay. had separate rooms conjoined by a doorway. Mm. The reason being, for religious reasons, you know, uh, what yeah. happened behind closed doors shouldn't happen. They had four miracle baby guys. <laughs> that just wasn't a thing. Um, mm -hmm. Right across the, the hallway, you'll mm -hmm. see two children's rooms. Mm -hmm. One of them is gated off. The other one you can go into, take pictures if you want to, look around. However, I will ask, please don't sit on any of the furnishings. Mm -hmm. yes. They're over 100 years old. Yes, They're falling up. apart. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Last room upstairs is mm -hmm. the very first indoor bathroom on the West Coast. The mm -hmm. toilet bowl itself is appraised at over $10,000. Not because of the age or the genuinity mm -hmm. or being that it was the first. Mm -hmm. It's because of the gold leaf artwork on the toilet bowl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More of a throne than a potty. And I'm sorry, it's out of use for anyone who wanted to take a dump on the sh <laughs> 1800s shitter. Um, <laughs> when you're done, you will go downstairs and that is the original table. Mm -hmm. What you don't know is that we actually had Thomas Edison here himself Ooh. swap out the gas lighting to electricity. You will see remnants of his work throughout the whole place. Mm -hmm. We also had Grand Bell here to install mm -hmm. the first telephone model. Um, so that is the table that they both sat and ate a meal at. That mm -hmm. is where the Mackeys ate at, the hearse, mm -hmm. um, Grant, Mark Twain, mm -hmm. 
Those are all people. He played a lot of poker with Mark Twain. And I even think Abraham Lincoln may have made an appearance in our town and mm. played poker with yeah. our esteemed man. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you'll go and see his dining room table. Mm -hmm. When you're yeah. done, you will go through that glass door if you need to use the bathroom. There's a bathroom to the mm -hmm. right of the porch. Um, you will go out into the yard. There's mm -hmm. two and a half acres. Both fenced-in properties are mm -hmm. ours. Um, so you'll see the wedding arch to the right. Just mm -hmm. keep following that brick path into the second one. Mm -hmm. Where the gazebo is, that's covering the second deepest mine in the United States. It's 2,700 feet deep. Oof. No, it's out of service. You can't go in it. <laughs> the gazebo's capping it off. You can go say hi to the chickens if you want. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that's okay. the end of your tour. I hope you okay. enjoyed. Yes. If you want to, you can leave a tip for the ghosties. Okay. They do tend to follow bad tippers. <laughs> Um, so if you want to, you mm -hmm. can. You can also leave us a good review on TripAdvisor if mm -hmm. you wish to. Mm -hmm. Until mm -hmm. then, I hope I see you again. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you. 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 There's people outside, I think, waiting. Yeah, I'm waiting for her. So the ghost reflection was spotted on that corner. So they took a picture, and that reflection just mirrored it right there, and a ghost appeared. And it's suspected to be this lady right here, who, according to them, it's a maid, not a family member. So she really loves uh, the house she works in. Vintage outfit. Uh, oddly enough. So this is the one going upstairs. The battery's about to die. So I better make it quick. Let's see. This is where I lose my case. That's a key to the bathroom. Uh, yes. The first room. Yep. Yeah, this one. Yeah. And the child jumped up and down. How can you stay here? There is no door. It's locked. There used to be a door. I only locked here. Yeah. It's not your legal. The room, the bathroom, the room. Uh -huh. I don't want to stay here. Okay. Is there a ghost here? Is there a presence of a ghost child in this house? Vintage uh, child's car, kind of like a buggy where you pedal using your feet. Ah, we're back. Wife of Senator W.M. Stewart of Nevada meets a deadly automobile accident. Ooh, that's pretty brutal. Oof, that's pretty grim. I could have sworn this painting's expression was different. Well, two cats, teddy bear. Patriotic teddy bear. Ooh. Oops. I wonder if this painting is actually because they had three kids. Is that the painting of the kids or just a like regular artwork? Crucifix. 
this kind of looks like a child's bed. Uh, this is again Virginia City, Nevada. First time here. So just checking out the mansion. Ooh, what the heck? I'm seeing things. For a moment, I thought I saw the door was in place, but this door is on the wall. Oh, trippy. So they got a toilet, they got a bathtub, I believe that would be maybe a heater, water heater. And this is a pretty decent sized bathroom for those days, back in the day. They got a sink. And look at the ceiling, man. This is the original design since back in the day and I'm actually interacting with it wow this is, must be the master's bedroom or one of it, there's two back to back I mean side to side they got a vintage phone right there uh, that kind of looked like a Weird contraption, kind of like an early version of a vacuum cleaner. Wall clock. Nice, brightly color, uh, colored curtains. Mirror. I wouldn't be surprised if diamond dust mirror, like the one downstairs. Nightgowns. That's their nightgowns. Uh, study desk. Uh, my mom has a little, back when I was a kid, there's a a little study desk she has in the bedroom um, that might be the heater, jewelry box uh, bed warmer, the one on top of that pillow um, chande uh, chandelier not bad this is a pretty pretty awesome bedroom is there a ghost here? Not a bit disrespectful or anything. Is the ghost of the jumping kid inside this building? Any ghost still here? I'm feeling a tightness on my clothes on my back. Is that you? Is that you pulling on my shirt? Is this the ghost of the kid pulling on my shirt? Is this the room where you, uh, the actor saw you jumping on the bed? Earlier, there, here, I can feel it again. While I'm using the camera to stare inside the bedroom, this is what I'm wearing, a thermal, and I can feel something tugging on the back end of my thermal shirt. Turn around, no one's there. Is this the ghost of the kid, or is this the ghost of somebody else? Can you make an object in this bedroom move if you're here? Can you make that toy car roll over? Can you make that chair move? Anything to show that you're inside this house. I'm speaking to the spirits of this bedroom. Are you here? If you are here in the bedroom, please make an object move. Something like a bed sheet, bed pan, chandelier, curtains.
Is there a ghost in this bedroom? Is there a spirit inside this bedroom? If there is a spirit, please make your presence known by interacting with any of these objects in the bedroom. Is that you pulling on my shirt? I feel a, a, a tightness on my thermal. If that was you, make that toy horse move. Is there a spirit living inside this bedroom? Can you make that crystal chandelier move? Or this is the bedroom where Johnny Depp slept at or something. <laughs> Stairs going up. Uh, yeah, that could be for the roof deck, I think. Okay, folks. Thank you for your warm hospitality. I enjoyed the tour. I'll be making sure to come back here someday again and visit you guys. But for now, I'm just paying a visit to your beautiful house. I truly enjoyed the professionalism of the people that toured me here. Very well educated. So I'm going down the steps of this beautiful mansion. For three floors, four if you count the, the, what do you call that? I don't know, loss of words at the moment. Oh, four of the roof deck. Yeah. Carpet is circa 1880, chandelier 1860, which is 100% pure coin silver. Table is carved walnut, depicting northern wind pattern. Dishes on the table area circa 1860, cranberry glass. Man, that's a beautiful, beautiful dining room. Even for today's standards, and those are today's standards, nonetheless, perfect. Look at that, so pretty. Is there a spirit here? Dead tour. Ominous. And she said something about the gazebo. Man, this is a beautiful property. I like it. Oh man, beautiful mansion.
So according to her, the entrance to the mine has been covered by a gazebo. I think this is the gazebo she was referring to, but if I understood what she was saying earlier, the mine should be somewhere in this area, which is close off, but that's the deepest mine, second to the deepest mine in California. Ugh. Figs! I think that's figs. The train depot. And I can't believe I made it all the way to Virginia City. I've been to Vegas, but never been to Virginia City. Nice little town they got here. So I forgot she dropped the tip. The price for it is six. I'm gonna give her four. I think that's pretty decent. Should be. 